joy to be here and I praise God to see all of you. This morning I wasn't sure if I would be here today because I felt a little bit like sick and I was telling myself if I feel sick now then what is going to happen? God, no one will have the opportunity to hear what you want to tell us this morning. And I praise God because uh, my strength started to come back and I felt like, yeah, I should stand up out of my bed and then I have my shower and go to church. So I said thanks to God. This morning I'm going to share with you the word of God from the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 11. I will invite you to open your Bible and you can read it. about uh, the end of the time. Many prophets will rise and will mislead a lot of people, a lot of believers, a lot of Christians. You may wonder how comes that the first prophet will come into the church and mislead so many people who have been known God First of all, as you know, we have got the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have got also ministries. And we have the word of God that we read every day. But if you start to observe, you will see that many Christians today, they hate the word of God. They don't have time maybe to read it. Whenever you talk about the word of God, for them it's like a challenge. When you talk about other ministries, maybe teaching, pastor, apostle, and so on, they find it boring. But whenever a prophet will stand up and start to tell them what is going to happen in their lives, physical lives, people are happy. Tell me more. For instance, someone can come and say, Trish, God has showed me something about you. In two days' time, you win lotto, and you are going to win maybe two million dollars. You'll be like, wow, are you serious? Yes, I've prayed six times, and God has shown it to me. Or again, someone will tell you, you know, what you have been going through, actually, God has said it is going to finish. All your pain will be taken away and God is giving you healing. And God spoke to me about it. And you feel like, well, this is a good message for me because our ears want only to hear what pleases our feelings. And that's where Satan has set up a trap in the church. You may tell someone, I will give you an example when I was a, a child and I was slapped for that example that I will tell you now. One day my uncle, my own uncle, I've got only one uncle, and he told me, hey son, between money and wisdom, what would you choose? And I was like, of course I'll choose money. <laughs> and he was like, really? And I was like, yes, I will choose money. What about you, uncle? Between money and wisdom, what do you choose? And he said, without hesitating, I'll choose wisdom. And I was like, sure. He was like, yes. And I was like, oh, okay. He wasn't sure. He was like, why do you say okay? I said, because that's, that's your choice. And he was like, you know, why will you choose money? And I said, I choose money because I need money. Any single person will choose whatever they don't have. And he said, do you say that I don't have wisdom? 
And for reasons like, yeah, I need money. I don't have money. I need it. You don't have wisdom. You don't also, you know, ask for money. You ask for wisdom. And he was offended. Because for him, it was like, you know, I was treating him like someone who was unwise and was asking for wisdom because he didn't have it. Then that message reached my mother's ears and she couldn't wait to slap me. Never seen that before. But as an innocent child, my choice was money, but the words that I passed on to my uncle, you know, showed like my uncle was unwise. That was a choice of his, and he did the wrong choice, according to what he understood. Today, prophecies in the church also rely mostly on the understanding of people and the interpretation of whatever prophets are saying. If you look in the Bible, you can see prophets saying something and they will tell you exactly what God has said. <coughs> but today, a lot of prophets are vague in whatever they tell you. They will tell you something and you wonder what did he want to say. You start now to find your own interpretation on those messages. And Jesus was just warning us. This is a sign of the time when this time is coming, false prophets will arise. They are not outside, they will come inside the church. And they will start to prophesize what is going to happen. What is a prophecy? It's to tell you what will happen in the future. That's, that's all. It's one of, according to me, it's one of the, I would say, the useless even gift if you want. Because we don't really, really need it for every single day. We all know, we all understand what is happening. And the false prophet, when they start to talk, they won't stick on the prophecies which are written in your Bible. They will come up with something new, which is about your day-to-day -day life. God has said that you get that job. God has said that you get that, uh, you know. God has said that this will happen. This. God has said, and when it's a matter of spiritual things, they talk really less and less and less about eternal life. Good prophets very often will just remind you. It has been written. Such prophets say this. Use a church, you have forgotten about it. Here we are. Here we are. Something is coming to happen. After your life, we'll have life. After death, we will live again. There is what we call eternal life. But false prophets will tell you, God says that, okay, you won't die. If you are sick, you won't die. You know, Stay strong. We are praying for you, you won't pass away. To pass away is no more. But they want just to make you to feel happy, to feel pleased. So that you can, you know, continue there. Now in Africa, we have got a plenty of uh, those prophets. To the point that uh, most of them will consult witches. They will meet with you and tell you about your entire life. They can meet with you and tell you exactly what you did yesterday. Or they can even tell you what you were five days ago. And those people are amazing because they speak and whatever they are telling you is the truth. But they are false prophets. They have been used by the power of devil, of Satan, to tell you what is going to happen. And someone can tell you in 10 minutes time, you will receive a call from your friend, and your friend will tell you A, B, C, D. And in five or 10 minute time, the call will come from that friend, and it will be exactly what that person has told you. How to not believe such a person? You will believe. And once you believe that person, you'll start now to follow him. And you will find that today in many churches, Believers don't anymore follow Jesus Christ. They start to follow their pastors, their prophets, and whenever they face a challenge, they'll go back to the prophet and say, Prophet, I have a problem. Pray for me. And the prophet
prophet will say, okay, this and this and that has happened because Michelle said that, because Zoe did that, because maybe Angela has shown you this and that. And as a result, this is what you see. But you can change it by doing A, B, C, D. We start to discover that to false prophet, people don't put their trust anymore in Jesus Christ. Their trust now is built in human being. If your pastor X is not there, you feel like God doesn't exist anymore. If the prophet Y is not there, then you feel like, you know, my brain, my spirit is blank because the prophet is the only person who can tell me what is happening in my life. And I consider those false prophets like our mobile phones actually. Many people will tell you, I can't live without my phone. Because my phone is my everything. In my phone, I hide all my secrets. When I'm on my phone, I can freely chat and talk to people that I don't even know. But I will trust my phone to send the message, and the message will come back to me. I have never had a Facebook account, but once I tried to open one, and in less than 10 minutes, I could receive, you know, hundreds of people wanting me to make them my friends. I have no idea who they are. I've never spoken to them before, but they wanted to be my friends. And my phone was showing me that these are the friends, friends with West, friends with West, friends. Who are they? My phone can't explain it to me who are those people. But the phone is just bringing them to me. Take more, take more. And if you have more friends, you may become famous. Really? The only friends that you need is Jesus Christ. And among all of those people, no one spoke to me about Jesus Christ. None of them. And it was like, oh, is this really normal? And the false prophets were never they come to church. You may be wondering, in a church of 600 people, one prophet is just, let me pick up any name. Let me say Elijah. Someone called Elijah in the church and is a prophet. Every single person in that church would like to become a friend of Elijah. They want to talk to Elijah every time. They want to meet with Elijah every time. And Elijah may not have the courage to tell his brethren, you have to go to Jesus. No, I will pray for you and I will let you know. I will do that for you, don't worry. God will take care of it. They may use the name of God, but what they are doing is not coming from God. Don't be foolish, excuse me to say that, don't be foolish because someone has just used the name of Jesus and you have to accept that everything they say is from Jesus. Jesus has warned us, many will come by using my name, but all of them are not mine. Why do we love, do we, do we like, do we so humbly come in front of prophecy rather than coming to the word of God? The word of God is life. Prophecy is not life. The word of God is the truth. Prophecy, Jesus has said here, false prophets will be there. Prophecy may not be a true story. Why should we give all our heart, all our faith, our mind and soul to prophecies? Jesus has said, follow me. Do you want to go to heaven? There's only one way, is Jesus Christ. Follow Jesus Christ. But we put him aside. We focus on prophecy. prophecies. And those prophecies today, because that's a weakness of a human being, Satan has been using that gift more and more and more. We don't want preaching anymore. We don't want prayers anymore. We want just to hear prophecies. When was the last time someone prophesied for your life? Or again, when was the last time your heart 
felt like, you know, I should hear from a prophet about my situation. We start to change people, human beings, prophets, to be like uh, our gods. We start to see them like magicians. They know everything. They can tell you everything. They have to pray for you, and whenever they will come back with a message, then you get solution to your problem. I can frankly tell you sometimes I will pick up my phone, my phone will ring, and it will be someone from overseas. The number that I will see appearing on my phone is from Australia. But when I will answer the phone, it's someone from China or India or somewhere there. Oh, we want to talk to the owner of this house. We have been doing such and such businesses. How did you get my number? They will never tell you how they got your number. They will never explain to you what exactly they are doing, but they will tell you about a business. Because they know everybody loves money, whenever we are talking about business, some people can be trapped. When we talk about money, it's easy to fall in a trap. And that's the same way that the spirit of false prophecies has been working. They will come through your phone, through your ears, to hear something that you like, then you will sell your soul. And in Africa, prophets now, actually, many prophets in Africa, false prophets, they don't even talk about God's messages. Now it's about healing. Miracles. Prophets now have been doing miracles. That's in my continent. Prophets now have been uh, talking to people only about healings. Prophets have been talking to people now about getting money, becoming wealthy, becoming happy. If your marriage has got some problems, go to see the prophets. And the prophet will give you some type of oil to apply on your skin, and your husband will come back, your wife will come back, your family will love you, and so on and so forth. Prophet will be the one who will stand up in the church and say, look, if you want really God to bless you, you have to come in front of me. They will pick up maybe a handkerchief. This is just an example. They will do this. And they will pass that handkerchief maybe on top of your head two or three times. And whatever you are asking for, you'll get it. I've got one, one of my people that I showed, I taught the word of God, and I baptized that person. Today, if you go on the internet, he calls himself Apostle Kiaso, Stephen Kiaso. He will pick up an apple, just a fruit, and he moves the fruit around, all the people who sit in front of him will fall. By falling, he will be like glory to God. And he start to talk. And those people will talk back to him. And he talks, he talks, he talks after talking, he say, I'm a prophet. Because today the church wants only to see those type of things, miracles, they want to see only things which will please their bodies. We are going far and far more from Jesus Christ. Today, if you want to disturb someone, maybe call him, steal a phone of him. Or oh, and you don't steal a phone. What will happen whenever you lose your phone? You know, it will be like, hey, my phone. This is my everything. I've seen a someone who leaves the house in the morning, they left behind their bag, handbag, it was okay. They forgot their handbag, it was okay. But whenever they forget their phone, they stop and say, I'm not going anywhere. They go back. In several families today, Angela can tell Leah, okay, can I see your phone? Oh no. Why not? Because I don't want to. But on that phone, there are a lot of secrets. Maybe I don't want your mom to see my friend, my friend doesn't want, you know, and so on and so forth. Even between a dad and mom, you can see. Dad is keeping his phone, and mom doesn't have the right to come close to that phone. And those are type of things that I'm using as example about false prophets. A phone, remember, can easily get destroyed. Whatever you see on the phone, it's not 
confidential. It will go through Spark, through Vodafone. They see everything. Whatever you send, whatever you receive, if they see it, they can also read it. And if they want, they can keep a copy of what you receive. And on top of that, whenever you send a message, they can, if they want, even they can block it, and that message won't reach the destination. That is the way Satan has been working with those false prophets. By using them to come into our lives and to be like our Vodafone, spiritual Vodafones, or again spiritual sparks. Controlling all our activities between God and ourselves. Then the false prophets will reach a point where you start to interrupt all your communication with God. You can't pray anymore. You want, first of all, to talk to the prophets. You can't do anything even normal before you talk to the prophets. And I've seen in my country again where a mother will do anything for the prophet, but she will never do it for her own husband. The prophet will say, let us be at church at 6 a.m. The mother will wake up at 6 a.m. and go to church to meet with the prophet. Whenever the husband will say, 6 a.m., please prepare breakfast for the children. She will say, I don't have time for that. Get you to it. Whenever a prophet will be like, okay, let's talk. They want to be there and listen for hours. But whenever Jesus will say, let's sit down and talk, thank you very much for the example you gave, Sister Anne. We don't have even one hour. We can't take it. Jesus didn't tell his disciples, come and pray with me. No, stay there. Let me go and pray. Just be there. Let me and pray. Let me go myself. I'm going to pray. But don't go away. Be there. And they were falling asleep. He came back, wake up. They fell again asleep. And that is the same way. Whenever we leave Jesus to be by his own, in his corner, and you can stay on the other side as disciples only, without being close to Jesus, we we'll fall asleep. And when you fall asleep, what happens? Some people will close eyes. They can sleep while they're smiling. Others will sleep and they'll start to have dreams. Others you can tell you, I need sleep and I can't do more without sleeping. And whenever Jesus wakes them up, they'll wake up for two seconds, but they'll decide to go back to sleep again. And is that a dangerous time when the false prophet will step into your life, when you are tired? When your faith is going like dying, when things are becoming tough in your life, you have got problems surrounding you, issues from all corners, then Satan knows, yeah, this is the right time to attack Odon, this is the right time to attack Tyrone, this is the time to attack Leah or Rebecca or any other person. Because they love God, they talk about the Bible, let me send a prophet. And the prophet will come to you. Telling you that I know what you've been going through. It's quite hard. But God has told me this and this and that is going to happen in your life. When Jesus left the earth, he said, I will leave you, someone will give you consolation. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. But today we start now to take our consolations in from people. We trust in people, human beings, and it's like, yeah, I need to feel something good. Someone who can help me to feel good is only Prophet Zachariah. It's only maybe Prophet X or Z. We forget completely about the Holy Spirit. When I feel sad, very often I will say, Holy Spirit, you come. Because I know that Angela or Tyrone or Colin or Trish will not, will never even take away my sadness. I need a consolation. Someone will console me. Someone will comfort me. And that person is not a human. 
human being who can talk, which is true, God may use us to reconfort us. But we shouldn't be like it's a focal point whenever I'm in trouble or pain or problems, my solution is maybe Hannah. No, my solution shouldn't be Hannah. God may use Hannah to give me a solution, but I have to pray to God, use her, if is that what you have chosen, for her to help me. Now Satan knows that we love people, we love those who talk, those who bring nice messages. He puts us now far and far from God. And one day, my phone went just blank. <coughs> and you can imagine what was my first thought. Oh, not the phone itself, but the content in that phone. I had all my contacts. I had everything in that phone. Oh, everything has gone blank. How am I going to get back all my messages? I have to revoke the phone. Can you please? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Come here and we'll do it for you. And what I'm on, believe me or not, they fixed everything. The phone wasn't there. That was my phone. But they fixed everything and everything came back to normal. Who is that person in your life? Who knows you inside out? Is it Jesus Christ? Or is it just a prophet to whom you give all your burden? For that reason, many, many Christians will go as to I will encourage you to love Jesus Christ. Love the word of God. Trust into yourself. Have a self-esteem, as we say. Whenever you face a challenge, whenever you face a problem, nail down and talk to your Jesus. Rather than giving your entire little or big faith to don't never serenade in the hand of a prophet. And our prophet from the Bible, starting from the book of Exodus up to the end, people never and ever used to go to see prophets. I'm coming here, tell me. No, 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 no. Prophet, they used to come with a message. God has sent me to give this to you. But today, we are the one who starts out to go to find them. And once we go to find those prophets, differently from the old time, prophets of the old time were not giving prophecies every single day or every single time they met people. They will come once a while. God will tell them, go and tell David this. They will come to David. Go and say to the nation of mine this. They will bring the message. That's all. But today, every Sunday, every time we meet with a prophet, they have a prophecy for you. I have a message of you. For you. I have a message for your family. I have a message for... And it's about just your... If you look at it clearly, about just your physical life. They don't talk very often about spiritual things. Today, false prophets are afraid to tell someone, you are sinning against God, God is unhappy. They will tell you, it's all right, take it easy. It's okay, God will help you, it is okay. And you feel like, oh, okay, so my situation is not worse as I thought. It's okay, God will take control of everything. And day after day, You'll be surprised one day, you're in front of the throne of judgment, and God will ask you. Will you say the prophet told me that that's why I didn't do what I was supposed to do? God will tell you, I've warned you, many false prophets will be there. Why did you accept to be misled? And to be misled is a personal decision sometimes. Because God has given to us eyes to see, intelligence, and the word of God to help us. And someone can mislead even another person, just simply like that. I will give you another example before I finish. Three friends, very good friends, were together walking, and one was in trouble. And one of the three 
three friends told the one who was in trouble, in order to forget about that problem, you need to buy alcohol, drink alcohol, and you forget about it. And the guy was like, yeah, okay. So if I drink, it means that my problem will go away. And it was like, yeah, try and you'll see. He drank, he drank, he become drunk, as you know. And once someone is drunk, what happens? You lose your mind. Instead of uh, taking away the problem, it created more problem in the family, more problem with friends and the neighborhood in that state of drunkenness. He was insulting people. Instead of opening the door with his hand, he kicked the door. He broke the door. He came inside the house. He destroyed everything because he was drunk. And a few hours later, when he came back to the normal state, they started now to show him what he did, to tell him what he said. He became more sad. And he was disappointed with a friend who gave to him that advice. Have you been disappointed with a false prophet one time in your life? Or you don't care about who are those false prophets? Your problem is that you just receive a message and you enjoy whatever they say. We should listen mostly to the Holy Spirit. He is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is the only one that we're given to guide us, to teach us, to tell us the things that will come, will happen. My target is to go to heaven. What is yours? Why do you pray to God? Why do you even go to church? Is that so that God can just take care of all your physical problems? Or is that so that one day you live into his kingdom? We are here to prepare our eternal lives. That's why we are on this earth. So please, prepare your life properly. Take it seriously. If you don't, no one will do it for you. Because if you try to give your life to someone else to take care of it, they will destroy it. That is why Jesus said, you have to carry your own cross. It might be heavy, but accept to carry it. A prophet can give you a message, thank God for it, go back home and pray to your God. And say, look, God, I've listened to what you said through that prophet. Let your will be done. Confirm it. If it's at your will, please God do it. Because also some other prophecies don't be ful don't fulfill, don't be fulfilled just as you are alive. Like something can happen even after 20 years, you have passed away. Get out. So we have to be ready for that. We are going to stop there by saying that we shouldn't be like those disciples of Jesus Christ who were sleeping and they couldn't even wake up for a minute. Open your eyes, open your heart. Tell Jesus, take away the sleepers for me. I want, I want to be awake. My eyes need to be open. My eyes want to see you every time. Because when sleep comes, when sleep comes, it attacks first of all your eyes. You feel like your eyes don't see anymore properly. Then you start to close them. Then you close them completely. And once your eyes are closed, once your eyes can't see anymore, you lose your sight, you get lost. And very often I get lost in my, into my sleep. You don't even think about the bed that you sleep in. When you sleep, you don't even think about what you are covering yourself with. When you sleep, you start to dream and live in another world somewhere there. While you are just in your house, in your bed. So sleep can take you far away. And many false prophets can take your thoughts, can take your mind far away from your God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, because you love us. Thank you because you have chosen us. Please continue to protect us so that we cannot fall in the hands of false prophets. Keep us astray from them so that we can inherit your kingdom. We are weak, Lord. We need your support and help. At every stage of our lives, we want you to be with.